Hello everyone, it's Daryl. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. We're having some trouble with the 05 500 again. And we're not sure what's wrong with that yet, but there'll be more on that in a future video. Today, we're going to be working on the 2008 Mercury Mariner Hybrid. And this has a common Ford problem here that I'm going to show you guys. Um, Ford has a known issue, and they have for the last, oh gee, 20, I'd say for at least the last 23 years of having problems with their digital display units, like the uh, climate control and entertainment system display head here where I'm pointing at, also with the lighting around the dashboards, and on the um, SUVs that have the overhead console, which is usually mounted up here, like the F-150s and the Expeditions and such, there's a display up there that displays uh, current temperature and a compass for direction and some other things, and those go bad a lot. And the same problem is this common in all of these display issues, and that is bad solder connections. They have very weak, low-budget soldering techniques they use on these things that don't hold up in the long run. And what happens is, when the cold weather hits, the solder shrinks, you know, as everything does in cold weather, and it loses contact with the circuit. And the same thing's happening with my display panel here. If the temperature outside gets below 50 or 55 degrees, the whole display stays dead or blank until I've ran the car for a while and the temperature warms up to 60, 65 or so. And everything still works. I mean, you can control the radio as long as you know what buttons you want to press. You can control the heating and air conditioning and all that stuff. It, everything works fine. It's just that the display fails. So we're going to show you how to remove and replace the display. Some people repair them. They take them apart. They resolder all the joints and connections. But honestly, I went to the used auto parts yard, pull yourself parts yard, U.S. Auto of Sterling Heights, and I purchased a replacement one for $20. And it doesn't matter if you get it from an Escape, a Mariner, a Mazda Tribute, hybrid or non-hybrid, V6 or four-cylinder, it doesn't matter. The displays are not part of the PCM system in the sense that they don't have to store information specifically related to your car. Anything that that display puts out is being projected to the display from some other computer unit. So whatever display you work is going to work just fine without any reprogramming or modifications. It's just a plug and play setup. And this is really easy to take apart. You're going to be surprised how easy this is. First thing I'm going to do just for clarity's sake is remove these little air fresheners I have here. And now we're going to take a fine pointed straight bit screwdriver and we're going to pop this trim panel out. And there's four pins in it. The proximal location are here and here and here and here. And they go straight into the dashboard behind that trim panel. So if you get a little leverage behind the panel, like so, and pop it outward, that's just going to pop right out. See, look at that. That one already is starting to pop out. And if you do it two at a time, one on each side, which I can't do because I got the phone in my hand, it works even better. But there we go. We got that one just about out. There we go. And now the top ones are actually coming out. So it's just a matter of pulling. Now you got to be careful when you get it loose like this. There's one wire connection inside. You got to be careful you don't break. That's the wire that goes to the airbag off warning indicator. And you don't want to disturb that wire. Now, if you're going to take this whole panel off, you can remove the wire. It's, let's see where it is. It's, it's on the passenger side. It's right back here on the passenger side. You could remove that wire. But I'm just going to let it dangle. And then we're going to remove the display head, which has four screws or bolts holding it in. And these are seven millimeter. So we're going to use a seven millimeter nut driver. And we're going to remove the four screws. Seven millimeter is a common size on a lot of Ford trim applications. You might not see those on other cars, but the seven millimeter is very common on Ford. Once the screws are removed, you just carefully tilt it forward a little bit and pull it out.
There's one wire connector on the back of it that we're going to have to remove. We'll flip it over so you can see it better right there. And you just squeeze the top down by right the bottom, I guess, actually, since we flipped it and pull it out. And that's all there is to it. Here's our module. And there's the back of it. Made in Malaysia by Sanyo. December of 2007. And there's a bunch of part numbers and serial numbers and such. So, now we're going to get our new one, or replacement one, used one, and install that. And since it's a problem that only appears in the cold weather months, and this is August 2nd, I took the replacement module and I stuck it in my freezer when I bought it over about a week and a half ago. So it's been in the freezer at zero degrees or a little less to simulate winter conditions. So it's good and cold. So I'm going to bring it out here. I'm going to plug it in and turn it on real quick to make sure it actually works. Because when you buy these used electronic parts from the junkyard, they don't come with any guarantee at all. But you can pay 10%, I think it is extra, like $2 extra, and get a 30-day money-back replacement warranty. You could get either a replacement part or your money back. So I did that because, you know, who wants to get stuck with a dead electrical product you pulled out of the dashboard at the junkyard? So let's go get our replacement thoroughly chilled part and see what happens, shall we? Here's our thoroughly chilled and frozen replacement part. Now you can see the condensation starting to form on it already. And there's the markings they put on it from the shop where I bought it. And then on the back we've got the part numbers and serial numbers and manufacturer's date and such. Some of it's kind of hard to see. It's been rubbed off by greasy fingers when I took it apart. But let's not waste any time. Let's plug it in and see what happens. There we go, it's in place. I didn't bother to bolt it down yet because I want to see what's going to happen, make sure it works. And look at that, coming right on. And everything works. But you can see the whole display works. Let's just check the, oh, yep, yep, the uh, right side temperature control, the left side temperature control. Look at that, there, right side, left side, <coughs> radio station. Different station tuning, there we go. Yeah, everything works. Exterior temperature, we are good to go. And for literally 10 minutes of your time and $20, you've replaced your display head that is very annoying when it doesn't work in the cold weather. And this is something you can easily do yourself. If you don't feel like going to a junkyard and pulling one out, you can pick them up on eBay used for a very good price as well. Heck, I'll sell you this one that doesn't work in the wintertime for five bucks. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I appreciate you guys supporting my channel and watching all my videos. It's really been fun. And we're going to keep doing it and keep growing this channel. And if you like the videos, please give it a like and subscribe. Maybe even share it with your friends. That would be a really big help to me to help my channel grow. Thanks again. Have a great day.